In this lesson, we're going to talk about JavaScript objects. The first thing that probably comes to mind when I say that we're going to talk about a JavaScript object is what is an object. We've been working with built-in objects since the beginning of this course. Almost everything in JavaScript is an object. Strings are objects, arrays are objects, dates are objects, and really they are containers that group together related properties and methods and they help add to reusability of code because if you create an object you can actually create a library of them and you can use them again and again which is what JavaScript has done by giving you string libraries date and time libraries in fact as we get further on into studying JavaScript you'll see that there are other libraries full of objects and functions that you can use like jQuery and you can do those exist because as programmers we can define our own objects. So let's talk about defining an object. Now you know that when we're creating an instance of an existing object, like a new instance of the date object, you use it using the new keyword. There is also simply an object object and we can de declare a new one as we do in this example here by creating box equals new object. To add a property to an object, you add a dot syntax, box dot width equals 20 pixels, box dot height equals 20 pixels, box dot x equals 0 pixels, box dot y equals 0 pixels. And that creates grouped properties that all would define the width, height, and x and y coordinates of our box. That's why they're all part of the box object because all of those, all of those properties describe the same thing. If we were to use this object, we could use the document.write statement and we can access each of those variables which are grouped logically together. If we do that, this is the result. The box will be 20 pixels wide, 20 pixels high, and it will be located at the coordinates of 0, px, and 0, px. Those are your x and y coordinates. More commonly, you're going to use an object constructor. And you use an object constructor by creating an object by use of a function. So you create the function, my box, and you pass in the parameters width, height, x, y, and division. Width will equal width, height will equal height, x and y will be our x, y coordinates, and the division is going to be the name of the div tag that we're going to modify. So we can use all of those properties that will describe that box. When we create an instance, we give it a name, redbox equals new my box. You can see that that comes back to my box because this is now our constructor that will allow to, us to create a new instance of the my box type of object. So red box becomes an instance of my box and we set its initial values at 20 pixels for wide, 20 pixels high, 245 pixels for the x, 245 pixels for the y, and move box is a variable that contains our div tag ID. Methods. A method is simply a function that belongs to an object. The function is created inside of the constructor function and you will need to declare the function. So to declare the function you would use a this. This just simply refers to the object itself. You'll see the keyword this used throughout. This change width equals change width. Then you create the function function change width and we'll pass it w which is a parameter which will create contain the new width. Then our second line here is actually displaying the box that we've created. It's another function that it'll call. There aren't classes in JavaScript. Classes is how you create objects in most other languages. They serve as the template for your language or for your object. All right, that's enough on the lesson. Let's take a look at this week's sample code. So this is a very simple object that, or the very simple web page that we're going to create. 
and we create an object which we have initialized to a height of 20, a width of 20, a left position of 245 and a top position of 245. On a grid system this is a 0, 0 x, y coordinate. So as you move down the y coordinate gets larger, as you move up the y coordinate gets smaller being 0 at this top line. The x coordinate is 0 here. This box I believe is around 500 pixels by 500 pixels, but we'll look at the style sheet in the next section when we get to creating this program. What you're going to do is you're going to create a program that will, as you lose focus or move into the next object, it will change the parameters of this box, which is simply a div tag. So we can set the width as wide as we'd like. Now it is a it is in a 500 by 500 bounding box, and notice we can go completely off of the range here. Ideally, you would do some testing to not allow it. I'm not really worried about it at this level. So let's change that to 50 and then we can change the left position and let me show you here left position if I set it to position 0 0 it puts it in the top corner now I'm guessing at what the bottom corner would be but let's try 480 oh, and let's try 4 60. Still going too far. Let's try try 450 by 450. And this should be right. I was thinking it was at 20, not 50 for the size. Not quite. So yes, it is. All right. And then what happens is when these lose focus, we call so that can have us change position and size in a box. And you're going to create this. I'm going to show you the sample to adjust the height and you'll finish it from there. This is a limited version of the final project that you're going to create. I'll show you that it works. I'm going to turn it into live view. I'm using Dreamweaver and when I change the height here, got it set to 88 and you'll see that as I change it and move out of the box it will change. Okay, let's take a quick look at how we did this. We have our standard where we're declaring the string to equal document got, dot get element by ID. This is sort of like our animation. I've created a variable named move box, which equals null. This is initializing a variable of an object type. When we load our onload function equals setting our move box to the moving div. I will show that in a moment. It doesn't actually move, it just changes sizes. And then I create an instance of my my box object. Let's look at how we declare the box. So function my box is accepting height and division as parameters. We're setting this dot height equals to height this dot division equals to division. This dot change height equals change height is how we declare our function change height so that we can call it. And our function has a parameter h that's going to be passed into it. When we call the function, we'll set this dot height equals to h, so it'll change whatever the initial height is, and then it will call the function display box. And when we're calling another function inside the same object, it's this dot display box. So we have our display box function, and we set the division style position equals to relative, and the division style height equals to this dot height. We have another function that's called, it's function make changes and we accept the field name and we create a variable named my value equals the field name dot value plus px and then we call red box dot change height this is how we access a specific method of our object that would be the change height function inside of red box red box dot change height and we send it the value 
Let's take a look first at the CSS. I've done some very basic formatting. Formatted an anchor. I didn't really need to do that. I sort of used the same thing I did last week and made some changes. I have a bounding div. I could test to see if we're going outside of these bounds. I've set it to left of 0, top of 75 to give me some room to put in th some things above it. Though I don't even think I need these. I think if I took these out, it would pretty much look exactly the same way because this is actually the div is being entered after my paragraph tags. So I've set the height to 500, the width to 500, and a thick solid border of a light purple color. Then I have a moving div. The position is relative. It's setting it to a left 245 and a top 245. And since it's starting with a height and width of 10, that puts it in the exact center of my 500 by 500 square. Um, set a background color for the div to a shade of red. And if I were to have text in here, it would be white, which I won't, so we don't need that. So those are the things that I need. I'm just going to save these and then I'm going to go back into my HTML. So I'm of course linking my CSS sheet and my JavaScript sheet and I have a form in here called JavaScript under my JavaScript objects. It's just named form1 method post no action. I have a label height with an input named height with the idea of height tab index of 0 and a value of 20 so that it starts with an initial value. On blur, that just means that it loses the focus, I'm going to call make changes and I'm going to pass in the word height. And then I have my bounding, I, my bounding div and my moving div. I actually have to make these exist in here for it to work. So when it calls make changes, it's passing it height. So it's getting the value from the height field, which is here, which is 20 plus pixels. So it would send 20 px when it changes the value. So again, I'll have these up at maryhelp.net. You can get the start files for the CSS and for the source code. And then you can modify these to add height, width, x coordinate, y coordinate, and Bear in mind that when I called this, when I did the final project that I used before in the JavaScript, I actually put in a switch case statement here so that the field would tell me which one I should call. So if it's height, it would call change height. If it's top, it would call top. If it's left, it would call left. If it's width, it would call width. So I used a switch case statement so that it would determine based on the field name that was passed in which method it would call from my red box object which is an instance of the my box function.